afternoon, Charlotte County. This is James. I am outside at Tringali Park here in East Englewood this week, uh, bringing something a little different today. Uh, as you know, school is has been out of session for a long time. We've been doing e-learning, distance learning, and so you might be wondering, what are some things that I can do that might be outside of regular school to challenge our children to um, to learn some new things and to practice some of those skills and so one of the things I love is so I'm a certified teacher so I love teaching I love um, science and social studies and math I love it all and so today I thought we would do some geometry and where else what better place to find geometry than outside because it is all over the place and so today we are going to walk around our park and see if we can maybe find some shapes and do some cool things with them. So I will tell you that this is going to be applicable for just about all ages, um, from our kindergarten, our real young kids, all the way up through middle school. So I'm gonna give you some strategies to uh, figure out some ways to, to help your kids learn geometry and some fun activities that you can do. So we're gonna take a little bit of a walk through our park here. Uh, most of our uh, parks are open. Our parks are open, so the trails, our tennis courts, pickleball courts, those parks are open. Certain amenities are still closed, like our playgrounds are still closed, so obviously we're not going to be going over there, but we've got plenty of space, plenty of room out here um, in our beautiful park. So we're going to start taking a walk, and the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to see what kind of shapes, what type of figures we can spot. So looking around, I already see squares and rectangles on our fences on our tennis courts. Obviously, we have a lot of rectangles with the lines in the tennis courts, and the tennis courts themselves are enclosed by a fence, which is rectangular. So we're looking around, we're seeing geometry all over the place. We have our lovely sign by the lake saying that alligators may be present. There's a rectangle. And if we walk this way, we'll just keep seeing what we can find. forms a circle. We've got circles on our little light box here. This is where we can turn on the light timer. So we've got circles and then the box itself looks like a square. If you think of the box too, it would be a rectangular prism. We've got a nice circle over here, which we're going to come to the circle in a minute. I see triangles on the bottom of these bleachers here. And if you look down, I see rectangles with the lines in the, in the sidewalks and the concrete. The lid of the garbage can is a circle. So we have geometry all over. So that's the first thing that you could do. If you have younger kids, you can you can take your kids out and say, okay, let's let's try and find 10 rectangles. Let's try and find 10 circles, 10 triangles. So that might be a good activity to start with if you're just learning your shapes. Now, the next thing that we could do is we can go up and say, I'm thinking maybe kindergarten-ish. All right, let's look at this rectangle. How many sides does this rectangle have? Well, this rectangle has four sides. One, two, three, four, okay? How many sides does that triangle have? One, two, three. And so we can count the sides on everything. How many sides does a circle have? Trick question, a circle has no sides. So that might be if we're talking about our kindergarten age. If we move up into our primary, into our lower elementary, now how many steps will it take to get around this rectangle? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay, I counted 17 steps to get around the triangle, or the rectangle. I'm sorry, that's not a triangle. I can make a triangle out of this, which we'll get to that in a minute, too. So that could be the next step, is counting our steps, counting how long it takes us to get around a shape, okay? And once we move a little higher, then we can bring measurement into it. So this year I brought out a yardstick and I did bring a tape measure. So I can measure, and so if I'm thinking about maybe about third grade, second or third grade, I probably want to measure these in feet, all right? Because inches might be a little much to do with math later. So if I measure this, I know that this is, I'm gonna say 
eight feet. It's a little under, but we'll round to the nearest foot. So this side here, I'm gonna write, did bring chalk as well, so that might help. So this side, I'm gonna say eight feet. Okay, and then I'm gonna measure this side here. And that's about five feet. So I'll write five feet. So we know with our quadrilaterals, with our rectangles and squares, that opposite sides are the same length. So if this side of the rectangle here is eight feet, this side of the rectangle here is eight feet. So I know I have eight, eight, five, and five. So we measure each side. So that's an exercise in itself. So say, what is the perimeter of my rectangle? So what is the distance? How many feet around is this rectangle? So that's perimeter. So we are going to continue with our little geometry lesson. So what I did was I just drew a line from one corner of my rectangle across to the opposite corner. And so I divided this angles. So what I can do is I can do a couple things. I can redo some of those exercises where I can say, okay, now I have a triangle with three sides. I could walk around to count my steps around it. If I'm in third or fourth grade, I can measure this side here. All right, so this is about nine feet, a little over. So I can say that this here is nine feet. Let me get my chalk out. And so I can now add my perimeter, 5 plus 8 plus 9, which would be 22 feet. I can find my area. Um, this is about a fourth or fifth grade skill. One half base times height. So my base and my height, 5 times 8 is 40. I divide that into 2, and I have 20. So the area of this half is 20. The area of this half is 20, and both would equal 40, which is the area of my entire rectangle. Now, if you're in about sixth grade or maybe even seventh grade, you can use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. You can actually calculate the length of this side without having to measure it. So you would do eight times eight is 64 plus five times five is 25, so 64 plus 25 is 89, and then take the square root of 89, which would be a little above nine. You would get a, you would get a decimal, you get kind of a sloppy decimal. Um, so that means that our math is just about right. Our measurement is just about right, it would be a little over nine feet. So those are some things we can do with rectangles. Now, the other thing is if you can find a circle somewhere in your park or in your area, you can do some of these same exercises with a circle, okay? Like we said before, how many sides does a circle have? Zero, all right? Because a circle doesn't have sides. But what I can do is I can go ahead and count my steps. I can walk all the way around the circle. I can count my steps. Now, you're gonna think, well, can I measure around the circle with a yardstick? I mean, I guess you could, but that might be a little more difficult. So, if you're in, probably about fifth or sixth grade, you're going to learn how to calculate the area and perimeter of a circle, all right? And to do that, we have a magical number called pi, all right? And so pi is what we call a mathematical constant. Pi never changes, and, it, and we use it for calculations typically to do with circles, all right? And so if I wanna find the perimeter or the area of a circle, all I need to do is measure across the circle, and I can use pi for the rest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure, I don't know if my tape is long enough, but we're going to try. Alright, so this here is about 9 feet. I'm going to go about another feet. We'll just say that this is 10 feet. That'll make it a little easier, alright? So the diameter, which is the length across the circle, the diameter of my circle is 10 feet. Now, if I want to find 
the perimeter or the circumference, which is the distance around the circle, I just do pi times diameter. Now, if we round, pi is 3.14, all right? So 3.14 times 10, so my distance around the circle, all the way around would be 31.4 feet. Now, an interesting fact about the number pi, pi goes on and on forever. The number goes on and on, it does not end. And the University of Tokyo has actually calculated pi to 1.24 trillion decimal points. So at, after the number 3.14 blah, 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 1.24 trillion digits which is absolutely, I mean, the mind can't even fathom how many numbers that is. I can also figure out the area. How many feet, how many square feet does this circle cover? Which is radius square times pi. So my radius is halfway. So if I go to the middle of the circle and I drew a line to the end, it would be about five feet. Because remember my diameter is about 10 feet. So I'd have five feet here, all right? so. 5 times 5 is 25, so there's my radius squared, times pi, 3.14, you're looking at a little over 78. So that would be my area. So it would cover about 78 square feet. All right, so those are some really easy things that we can do in our parks. So I know we had a little bit of technical difficulties here, so we're going to go ahead and put these videos together, make sure they're posted on our Facebook page. Please tune in, keep tuning in every weekday at 1.30 on the Charlotte County Parks and Recreation Facebook page. On Thursday, tomorrow, we will be live from South County Regional Park in Punta Gorda, and we'll be coming to you every day from another one of our parks. So until the next time, we hope you are staying safe, having fun, and having some awesome times doing geometry because math is awesome. <laughs>